presenter is uh, Pablo Medrano Viscaño. I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, it is a recorded session. Can you put it on the screen, please? Hello, my name is Pablo Medrano. I'm going to talk about one of the chapters of my PhD. Here we identify key species and areas for research and conservation in road ecology. So we all know that roads are one of the main anthropogenic causes of wildlife mortality in the planet. And it's estimated that 194 million birds and 29 million mammals are killed in European roads, while 340 million birds in the United States. However, mortality is different across regions and taxa. It's been found that different landscape features and configurations can lead to higher mortality rates, as well as some wildlife traits uh, have been found to, to be important predictors of mortality. For example, larger birds with a higher population density, more clutches per year, have shown a higher mortality, as well as mammals with a higher population density, uh, scavenger diet, uh, smaller home ranges have shown more high mortality rates as well. In this context, it is expected that biodiverse areas with important road infrastructure could harbor high mortality rates. This is the case of Africa, South and East Asia and South America. These regions contain most of the biodiversity hotspots in the planet, but uh, major future road developments are projected. So we selected Latin America as a study case for this research. We thought that it could be an ideal region. There are 3.5 million kilometers of roads. There are seven biodiversity hotspots, two of them with the highest biodiversity of endemic vertebrates in the planet. And so across it, this region, what we did was uh, identifying priority areas and taxa for conservation and research. We did this by combining predicted mortality rates for birds and mammals with information on road network and also species conservation status. So how did we do this? Well, we combined local vulnerability with local exposure and whether areas in Latin America were studied or not. Local vulnerability was given by predicted mortality rates of birds and mammals in Latin America. We calculated this in a recently published work, and you can see here roadkill patterns in Latin American birds and mammals. For this work, we developed random forest models based on wildlife traits and habitat preferences. So this was local vulnerability, and this was combined with local exposure, which was given by road link data. And we created bivariate maps in Latin America, as you can see here. So we divided our data into terciles. So to define priority areas for conservation, we chose the top tercile of local vulnerability and the bottom tercile of road abundance. So it was like high vulnerability and low road density. These were priority areas for conservation while priority areas for research were unstudied areas. You can see here the yellow dots. These are areas where you can find roadkill studies. So priority areas for research were unstudied areas that had a high vulnerability in the top tercile and also a high exposure. So it's high vulnerability, uh, high road density, and and studied areas. These were priority areas for research. We also identified priority taxa for conservation and research. For these analysis, we selected taxonomic orders and we also extract data from our recently published work. Here we identified as conservation priorities to those taxonomic orders with high mortality and at least one third of species described as roadkill. While for research priorities, we have two categories. The first category were those taxonomic orders with high mortality, but less than one third of species described as roadkill. While 
the other category where those taxonomic orders where at least one third of species were listed as threatened or data deficient and no roadkill data was available. Okay, so these are the results. We found that the Amazon is a very important region for conservation with many species susceptible to mortality in the roads. We can see that there is an overlap of birds and mammals across this region, but there are also some regions in Brazil that are particularly important for birds conservation and some areas in Argentina, the south of Argentina and Chile, with special importance for mammals. On the other hand, for research priorities, we found that there is an overlap of birds and mammals in Central America and also the north of Colombia, a great part of Ecuador, and uh, some regions in Peru. But there are also particular zones like uh, Central Argentina. It's, uh, it can be considered as a priority area for research for mammals, while you, we can see that some coastal areas of Brazil can be identified as important areas for research in birds. Additionally, we found that Catarpiformes and Cariomiformes are important taxa for bird conservation, while Singulata and Pilosa for mammal conservation. For example, you can see here some pictures. They come from a citizen science project that I am conducting in Ecuador, and these animals from Pilosa and Singulata taxonomic orders are commonly found on, on roads. On the other hand, priority taxa for research, we found that cuculiformes, caprimulgiformes, pelicaniformes, and ansariformes are cataloged as category A for research, while procellariformes and esfemisiformes, category B. For mammals, it's lagomorpha, category A, and pausi tuberculata and eulipotifla, uh, category B. Here you can also see some pics that come from my citizen science project, except for the first picture, which is a penguin. I found this in the internet, and this roadkill was found in South Africa. So we can see that this can be vulnerable species, but maybe the studies are scarce. Well, this work is right now in review. And I must emphasize that this is a widely applicable approach. We did this for birds and mammals, but it can be done for other taxonomic groups. Also, we selected taxonomic order for our analysis, but you can choose any other label. Uh, additionally, we apply this model to Latin America, but this model can be applied to any other part of the planet. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Also, if you want to contact me, these are my emails and also these are my two Twitter accounts. The first one is my personal one and the second one is uh, from my citizen science project in Ecuador. So thank you very much. Pablo. Yes. Hello. Yes, Hi. I am here. Hi. Yeah, now is the possibility to ask questions. We are quite ahead of the time. Is there any question, any comment from from the listeners? No. I think everything is clear. Uh, my question would be, um, Pablo, what, what, what is the next step then? How, how is this method that you developed implemented in, in your country or in the countries that you're focused on? Is there any, any well, implementation plan? Uh, okay, well, the next step would be like applying to other biodiverse regions in the planet. Right now, as, as I mentioned, we, we chose Latin America. Well, I am from Ecuador, so... Uh, I, I have <laughs> data from Ecuador, and also we were collecting data from our other published paper. Uh, we had these predictions uh, 
for mortality in Latin America. So the next step would be like doing something similar, for example, in Southeast Asia or Africa, where also we have like, these are very biodiverse regions with uh, future plans for road expansion. So it would be like also collecting data from road kill studies and uh, doing this, these models that, that we did, maybe replicating what, what we did in the last paper and doing this thing to, to know which uh, areas would be like uh, a good option for, for example, in, in this case that I presented, maybe I, I must emphasize that these areas in the Amazon, these are conservation. This means that, uh, well, these were like conservation areas. What this means is that if future road developments are constructed here in the Amazon, mortality would be critical. So it's, it's this, message, this message that we want to transmit that these conservation areas, we have to be careful when developing new roads because the, the species that are distributed in these areas are very susceptible to road mortality. So we must be careful. So. As I mentioned, this could be applied to any other part of the world. And yes, we were thinking about doing it, but uh, when the paper is published, uh, you can see may maybe more detail of this. Okay. Thanks for your explanation. Um, I see no other hand raised. So thank you, Pablo, for your work okay, and for your presentation. You.